So I do think that um, exposure and accessibility are like two really key topics in you know, people getting their hands in the dirt, people understanding what sustainability is and what sustainable farming is. Um, farmers markets are really awesome. They are a really pivotal you know, area where people, the farmers and the farms can show off their wares and get to know their community. Um, unfortunately, like farmers markets operate under really weird hours, you know, like who has the time to go to a farmers market on Wednesday between two and six? Um, there are a lot of, you know, marginalized and underrepresented communities where people are working during those hours. They don't have, you know, transportation or, or reliable transportation to get to the market. Um, and if they rely on, you know, public transportation, I mean, who's going to want to lug, you know, three bags full of produce back to their house um, when they can just get in, you know, walk across the street to the Fred Meyer Safeway. So I think that's a really, I don't know, that's something that I've been thinking about a lot. Um, it's something that I think needs to change in order for us to be able to reach out to more of the community that is not necessarily, you know, your white collar, stay at home type people. Now, I think it would be really cool to do, like, we're, we're a full diet farm, but like for farmers or farms that maybe only do vegetables or only do meat or dairy, you know, they, they have a specialized concentration in something. I think it would be really awesome to maybe do like, like a CSA co-op type mm -hmm. of thing and maybe have one point person be the hub, collect everything and actually be able to deliver. Yeah. And you could really access more people that way. So this is something really interesting that I didn't even know existed until I started working at a farm, interning at a farm. Um, basically, there are a lot of farms who, if you go and volunteer for a set number of hours or a set number of days, it really depends on the farm, they will trade you a CSA share for your work. Um, and so I don't think that this is a very well-known practice. Um, again, I didn't find out about it until I started interning. Um, many of our volunteers who come, like they'll leave here with some form of produce compensation as well. Um, like, you know, if you say, hey, can I have these three carrots for, uh, you know, the rest of the week? Like, no one's going to say no. We have such a surplus of food. Um, we're, we're not going to deny it. And there's always going to be like the carrots that aren't good enough for the CSA that are going to go to the pigs anyway. Why not take that home with you? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that uh, also, I think a lot of people are programmed to um, think, well, I need to trade, you know, money for this food. Um, farmers are really good at bartering. Like farmers, we have a CSA member who trades us beer, a half keg of beer for a CSA share. So like we don't necessarily need monetary compensation. Um, so like feel free to get creative. if you know, on a farm website where you want to go volunteer, they don't say anything about CSA work share, still ask. I mean, it's very rare that a farmer is going to not have, you know, a surplus of food that they can part with. Um, and they, please believe that they appreciate the work as much as they appreciate the money. Um, so I think that that's something like, that's an educational, I guess, piece that we really need to work on um, telling the community about.